Hi, <clears throat> and uh, good evening here from Finland on the 15th of June, 2018. This is Michael, Michael Robbins, and um, we are continuing with our uh, comments on the second initiation compilation. This is now program number three. We've just been some very interesting material about the way the the will and Shambhala and Sanat Kumara and identification uh, all enter sometime uh, at the second initiation or afterwards uh, giving because of that correlation of the astral plane which is the plane on uh, which uh, is the focus of the initiation uh, number two and its similarity uh, in terms of numbers to the monadic level this is what we call uh, a relationship through numerical uh, affinity so now we reach here the uh, status and ray characteristics of the uh, group um, group members and it might be just a great idea to turn on my chronometer so I know how long this program lasts you know how many times can one forget such a thing say all uh, are all the members of a group let's say <coughs> such as the Tibetans group that he was uh, training uh, in relation to Alice Bailey and the Lucis Trust and the Arcane School are all of its members at exactly the same point of evolution and he says by no means as a matter of fact we know one of them had not uh, yet taken even the first initiation all the others had and a couple of them had taken the third already or were applying to the third so that represents quite a difference in the duration of training um, a group should be and is composed of individuals at varying points of development notice the word should be because apparently there's a value in this um, some may be preparing for the second initiation and in many respects this was the initiation lying before uh, the majority of the members in DK's group and some uh, were ready to take it imminently in that very life and DK would warn them of this or give the indication that somehow they had passed uh, and or somehow they were not succeeding in taking what was offered others may be in training for the third initiation and a few may be ready for the fourth or the fifth initiation I'm not sure that there were any there ready for the fifth initiation maybe someone like Alice Bailey someone like uh, Roberto Asagioli maybe they could have the fourth initiation in sight this is simply my view of things you know maybe correct but I just or incorrect I share with you the impression that I receive the nature of the initiation to be undergone is known only to the disciple and his master it may be estimated by others you know rightly or wrongly I think very often incorrectly estimated but uh, it's really known uh, with certainty only to the disciple and uh, his master it is of no interest to the group itself well many people uh, show that they are interested but uh, these are secondary matters and matters with to which the old saying mind your own business really applies the diversity of the initiations for which preparation is being made tends to enrich the group content because you can reach so many more people on different levels that's the whole point isn't it okay um right the diversity i'm going to just sort of underline that the more ray types which are found functioning in the group 
the more valuable with the, with its service be. And uh, certainly uh, there were personality types in DK's group of every kind. First ray, second ray, yes, third ray, fourth ray, fifth ray, sixth ray, and seventh ray. Absolutely. Every type was there as I made a brief review in my mind. As far as soul rays go, first ray types were present, second ray types were in abundance. There were a couple, three third ray types, fourth ray souls, no. Fifth ray souls, no. Sixth ray souls, yes. Uh, at least two trying to transfer onto the second ray, and seventh ray souls, maybe a couple. Uh, neither The seventh ray souls actually didn't do so well in his groups, and, uh, well, maybe one of the third ray soul types did uh, okay. Uh, but pre preeminently, the first and second ray were the rays of the individuals found in his group, and DK said that occult groups would be largely composed of those on the first ray and the second ray. And I think we're thinking here largely of the soul ray. So um, we stick to our own business. We try not to uh, give helpful advice. <laughs> Vice, you know, DK said there's no need to be running here and there telling others what the masters expect of them. So often, you know, it's uh, it's not accurate. I've been, I suppose you have too, I've been told sometimes with interest and value and sometimes in a manner completely erroneous. So it's best to stay out of that and leave the <clears throat> interesting question about initiation to the disciple and the master. Of course, when you're an esoteric astrologer or esoteric psychologist, you have to know something uh, in general about the relationship uh, of the disciple to the initiatory scheme. Otherwise, you may be very far off in uh, uh, offering valuable advice. I've, I've seen some horoscopic assessments which had maybe nothing to do with where the individual really was, you know. So the intuition must be activated and some kind of accuracy found if one is to offer help, but one does not need to get into the uh, exactitude and make pronouncements about it. Okay, so that was from Dinah 2, 383. Here's another reference, uh, I suspect also from Dinah 2, yes. Uh, the will aspect, concerning the will aspect and the second initiation. At the second initiation, the initiate begins for the first time, though in a most elementary form, to employ the will aspect and in the revelation accorded, as the use of the will will always uh, bring eventually revelation, he takes a major step towards the third initiation of transfiguration. Now remember, in Initiation Human and Solar, page 84 and 85, he pretty much tells us that uh, uh, the third and fourth initiation can be taken in the same life as the second, and then he uses the word probably, and probably will, or in the next life. That word probably is astonishing to many people, and it's been astonishing to me too, but things do speed up at the second degree when you are borne along by the ashramic magnetism, we call that entering the stream, and the current of the stream is like the magnetism of the ashram. It adds speed to your normal progress, speed and a degree of certainty. So this uh, transfigure initiation, transfiguration, it connotes the transfiguration of the personality and that's what we have to understand. It lifts the personality beyond uh, its subservience to its own tendencies and desires and makes it, uh, in terms of soul infusion, just about completely subservient to the will of the soul. The ancient authority of the personality is now conquered. Uh, what was that? Uh, page 680. 6 and 687, I believe, 
let's just take a quick look here because it's a very important page uh, if I'm correct yep that's it 685 and 686 freedom from the ancient authority of the threefold personality marking a climaxing moment in the history of all initiates and probationary initiates uh, we're talking about a climax following the probationary period of the first and second initiation and there are other climaxing periods probably the great decision at the sixth initiation and the refusal at the ninth initiation are such periods as well a climaxing moment so the transfiguration of the personality occurs then and its liberation this is so beautiful from the alluring imprisonment of the three worlds and when you reach a word find a word like allure or alluring uh, you know it isn't good you know what happens to a fish when they follow that nice shiny lure they get caught they get stuck they get lifted up into an element where they cannot breathe and we get uh, submerged into density in which we cannot uh, breathe spiritually so the will is coming in here at the second initiation now even though it is venus jupiter and uh, neptune which are the prominent planets making the second initiation possible the um, presence of the battles of mars and uh, the subterranean dredging if i can call it that of pluto and the uh, control of the astral body through the will of vulcan all of those planets which have uh, a lot of first ray in them are part of that picture uh, maybe a subsidiary part but certainly a preparatory part for the kind of second rate tranquility which has to be applied to the astral body by venus uh, jupiter and neptune okay um moving on so that was dyna 2 397 the next one the dyna 2 397 and on and we're talking about the second initiation the control of the astral body and this interesting term propelling aspiration that's the value of it isn't it uh, maybe that's why at the second degree the speed factor uh, receives attention and the uh, developmental speed of the initiate is really increased because of this propelling aspiration and we can pretty well think of aspiration increasing greatly at the um, second initiation both through neptune a planet of elevating aspiration and uh, through jupiter ever expanding the boundaries ever longing for the wider ring pass knot at the second initiation of the baptism the control of the astral body is broken now that doesn't mean we're not going to have these uh, moments when the astral body rears its head and wants to compel uh, activity and uh, wants to move the disciple in a certain direction but that uh, arising of those tendencies will not be in control it will rather be controlled so anyway the the astral body its control is broken it is sacrificed in order that the intuition the higher counterpart of the propelling aspiration may assume control uh this, this is quite a statement we we know that at the first and second initiations uh, in esoteric astrology we learned that sagittarius a sign of great aspiration involving jupiter and mars um is prominent and uh, does drive forward on the quest just the way it might well show up at the sixth degree and drive the chohan as a monad forward upon the greater uh, path of uh, higher evolution so the uh, sagittarius is considered one of the intuitive signs so uh, it, it controls both uh, the one-pointed aspirational process and 
it has much to do <clears throat> with tapping the intuition. There are other signs connected to the intuition, of course. Gemini is, Pisces is via Neptune. And I suppose you can be born in any sign, really, and have uh, in or under any sign and have the intuition stimulated. But what is interesting is that so many people think the astral body gives them intuitions when it is more likely to be a factor covering up the true intuition, which is uh, uh, pure reason, the buddhi, the wisdom. The, the astral condition uh, cloaks it, disguises it, covers it. So, uh, and to think that the intuition is the higher counterpart of the propelling aspiration, basically what happens here is we shoot that arrow of aspiration that is propelled forward, and it does tap the intuition. So if our aspiration is keen enough and well enough directed and unencumbered by the usual astral glamorous conditions, it may well tap the intuition. And we, in a way, we shoot that arrow along the Anta Karana. So I, I do like very much the words... Uh, propelling aspiration, and I do want to hold in my mind that this uh, propelling aspiration is, the, in a way, the, uh, the lower counterpart of the intuition. All right. I mean, you know, so much, so much can be said, and, and, you know, we're looking for hints as we are studying these matters. Uh, something may jump off the page as being significant to you or to me, and that is a hint for you or for me, depending on who's doing the reading, what's jumping, you know, what is really noticed, aha, aha, you know. Like for me, a, a great hint has been over the last few years that uh, harmlessness is the expression of the life of the man who, and this is the part, realizes himself to be everywhere. You know, I, I can't get beyond that because it's just an amazing statement. You might just read right over that thing and say, well, what really is harmlessness? But that realization of being everywhere, what does that mean? What does that do to the concept of boundaries and number and division, you know? So anyway, let whatever hint may be lying in wait for you in the mass of material the Tibetan has given, jump off the page and uh, find your attention. So here's something from a letter to a disciple, uh, Soul Ray 2, Personality Ray 1. I wonder what disciple that is. Um, oh, it's a rather long section here. Oh, that's, uh, whoa, that's, this is a long one. But okay, um, it's all about the second initiation, so let's get into it. I, I think that we don't have to always worry about reading with continuity because sometimes a juxtaposition which appears through topical study will carry revelation whereas simply reading along horizontally you might not find that juxtaposition and the revelation accorded might not come so he says uh Let's see if I can find the page here. Be interesting because I'd I'd like to know who this is. You know, <laughs> it's a long it's a long one. It's Dinah two five twenty four. So why not see? Why not see here just for fun? Um, so here we are. Maybe we are Dinah. Two, did it say 524? 524. 524. And um, to whom is this? The word beloved brother, of course, and friend, and friend. Now, there's ways to find this, of course. Uh, blah, blah, blah. My co disciple, even. So DK is valuing this person. Highly. Um, 
Thank you for bearing with me. It's a long one as I try to go up to where this actually begins. Ah, ISGL, okay. Well, this disciple was valued highly and is a real object lesson to all of us because his possibilities were great. But his uh, fulfillment left something to be desired and you know, we cannot psychologize that. He was, I think, a Gemini person with Leo rising, just like Alice Bailey, and he had the moon in Taurus, and his uh, rays were, uh, I think, a first-ray monad, a sixth-ray going to second-ray soul, first-ray personality, first-ray mind, sixth-ray astral body, and first-ray physical body, a very difficult combination of energy. So we can keep that uh, somewhat in mind as we uh, read what he said to ISGL. Uh, group love was part of it. Stability was part of it. And I think integration uh, was part of it. Um, I'm not too sure about that first, the I, so to speak. Right, I did a little look up there and uh, illumination is what the I stands for stability yes and group love and you know again uh, this individual I believe was uh, passing through uh, possibly or could the second initiation had a very acute uh, emotional response to many things that were going on and uh, that could have covered up the light but if you think about his Leo rising sign, uh, the will to illumine is there. And certainly Gemini, you know, it's just it's that combination Alice Bailey had and the relationship between the brothers in the light, between the pairs of opposites was certainly possible, but then he had to pass that degree and achieve some degree of stability. And whereas Alice Bailey had certainly done that and probably was an initiate of the third degree, uh, this man was struggling uh, with the second degree. Anyway, he says here, my beloved brother, he's trying to shield and carry this acutely sensitive man um, in the field of love. I would like uh, to start my communication to you with a clear and definite statement. You are in process of taking some of the final tests which precede the taking of the second initiation. Now, this was not a welcome thought. Uh, see if this is correct. No, this is not correct. This was not a welcome thought to ISGL because uh, somehow he was uh, deluded into thinking that he was taking the fourth initiation. Sometimes it happens, you know, because there's a connection between the fourth and the second initiations and in terms of difficulty they have some things in common for that reason says the tibetan i feel the need to writing to you with clarity see illumination is needed clarity is needed a bringing you some measure of comfort because the man was tortured uh, by his life and uh, by the sense of inadequacy and dissatisfaction about the way he was conducting his discipleship, though maybe only he knew that and his master, bringing you some measure of comfort and of strength, and of indicating certain steps which, if you will take them, may hasten the process. So DK certainly being cautious here about what may be possible for this individual. Somehow I'm uh, th this man is very interesting because uh, there were very few first-ray monads in DK's group. There were a number of first-ray souls, and all the indications are that this man was indeed a first-ray monad and that his true master uh, was Master uh, Moria, even though he would was supposed to have the second-ray soul transferring off the six but he just it just seemed that he for whatever reason couldn't do it and you know maybe one day uh this process will be repeated and 
letters to ourselves will be made available at our own um, permission, permission, uh, consent, and we can see others psychologizing ourselves, and we'll we'll know better and more. But uh, they may learn something from that psychologizing. Yet I feel very great difficulty in approaching you, though not for the usual reasons. Oft a master cannot at some particular time reach a disciple because he is surrounded with too much activity or with activities of the wrong kind. See, uh, you know, internally, subjectively, Master DK sometimes tries to draw close and we forget that on his own side, there may be difficulty and delay because of the conditions uh, that we have uh, set up. In some cases, the thought life of the disciple, the thought life of the disciple has created so many thought forms that temporarily he cannot be reached. That's overactivity on the mental plane. He is absorbed in some form of service which he deems essential and which looms larger in his consciousness than the work of the ashram with which he is affiliated. So sometimes these secondary preoccupations seeming utterly important to us uh, prevent the master from really getting through. And what could be more important than to do the work of the ashram and to uh, enable the master to reach us when he needs to, to clarify our, our path, if he will, and the, the chance is open to him to do so. These, however, are not the things which hinder easy contact with you. So, okay, uh, these are the usual things which hinder contact with the disciple, but in this case, no, something else. Okay, uh, what do hinder? are the results in your consciousness at this particular stage of the tests of initiation themselves. So the man is being tested before the second initiation. It's a drastic testing. Uh, and with what uh, result in consciousness? It is the emotional glamour. Now, you know, here he is very close to the second initiation, and this shows that even at such an elevated state, he has not uh, overcome some pretty uh, strong uh, inhibiting glamours. Uh, so it is the emotional glamour which has engulfed you. Now, he's basically a second-rate type, and DK tells us that second-rate types are often uh, engulfed by many, many glamours. The whole field turns glamorous, maybe not as clearly cut as some of the other ray glamours, but definitely providing a uh, enveloping field of glamour. So it is the emotional glamour which has engulfed you, and freedom from glamour has to be demonstrated at the second initiation. It's not, uh, well, it's not complete freedom, is it? Not complete freedom but it is a relative freedom, and as DK says, glamour may rise, but uh, even though it's there, it's not allowed to <coughs> hinder or inhibit or really thwart or deflect the service of the individual because they are sufficiently detached from it, they recognize it for what it is. It is the intense awareness you experience at this time of yourself, the central factor. Well, he is a very first-rate person. Uh, even the word person can be used in relation to the monad. DK refers to fifth-ray people, i.e. fifth-ray monads. So this man has a first-ray personality, first-ray mind, first-ray physical nature, and most likely, according to all that has been said around him, a, did I say fifth-ray? I meant first-ray. Okay, excuse me. First-ray personality, first-ray uh, mind, first ray, physical nature, and probably the first ray monad as well. So we know one of the glamours 
um, is uh, centralization and the difficulty for the first ray is to decentralize. He looks at himself as a, being uh, in a position of great power. This again is a necessary but distressing prelude to this initiation. Okay, so uh, centralization uh, is part of the process of uh, approaching the second initiation. Okay, let's get that spelled correctly. The glamour comes between you and me. It is a form of condensed energy. And uh, DK cannot get through the way he would like to because the thought and emotions are preoccupied with this uh, factor of centralization, intense awareness of oneself as the central factor. The self-awareness comes between you and the ashram, as well as between you and, and the group. So the ashram is the inner larger group, and the outer group uh, that DK has pulled together attracted, um, that's here called the group, uh, but uh, there's more to it. Uh, there's a group which he has gathered around himself uh, in a kind of external ashram on the physical plane. Uh, he did some work in um, Asheville, North Carolina, and I think there was some work in Montana, and he had external students, which he was teaching. So... Um, Glamour really, in this case, uh, is inhibitory. And, um, and even a master with all of his abilities um, can be stopped by the glamour. Having read this far, and you know, <laughs> Master DK is aware of the acute sensitivity of this individual, his power to suffer, as I recall. Um, and of course he did, you know, this individual did, we should bear in mind, end up quitting the group. It was just too much for him to be told the truth and maybe he imagined somehow that Alice Bailey was writing instead of the Tibetan. So many of the disciples figured that when something was written that didn't agree with them, it was Alice Bailey writing and not not Master DK. Well, we can understand the foolishness of that approach, but we can understand that it's uh, all too human and uh, likely in quite a number of cases. Having read this far, will you, brother of mine, continue? There is some probability that you may not. Okay. You may take the position I... Say not, you will, that you repudiate as false all relations to glamour. Yeah, so, um, his position that he might take, he might take, is that you repudiate as false all relations to glamour. But here's the question. Does one, uh, is the question, does one really understand what one uh, claims to repudiate? This is the problem. Sometimes our own glamours are so difficult to understand. Uh, you may declare, says DK, that it touches you not, which assertion itself would indicate that it does because here is the powerful one at the center who has mastered all these things at least in his own eyes your deeply seated sense of spiritual superiority to your group an attitude which is sadly affecting them as dk can see may prevent you you're listening to me your friend and brother for many years nay lives so just notice notice the kindness and solicitude with which um, master dk approaches 
in a very sensitive situation. I would, however, ask you to read what I have to say. Perchance I may throw light upon your problems and aid you to take the initiation, the second initiation, right? Which was your destined goal in this life. Okay, second initiation. But which you yourself may postpone until the next, and apparently this did happen due to hurt feelings. Uh, so, sorry. Apparently, this did happen. For this postponement, there is no need. If you grasp the significance of what is happening in your life at present. So this is a an acute moment in the preparation of the disciple for an initiation, um, a moment in which the master is giving close attention to the process and possibilities. Okay. The second initiation is a profoundly difficult one to take. Well, it's sort of the door uh, into a rapid approach to the ashram. Uh, for those upon the first or second raise of aspect, it is probably the most difficult of them all. And that's something to ponder, isn't it? Because I think many of us look ahead to the demands of the fourth initiation and think of how profoundly difficult it will be, and it will be depending on who we are and what our rays may be and the situation in which we find ourselves and what the karma of our lives may indicate. But he's telling us that upon the first and second ray and Upon these rays, the majority of disciples in occult groups uh, are found. Uh, it is the most difficult. The astral nature is deeply self-centered. And he's telling this individual that indeed it is, and all of this comes to the fore acutely before the second initiation. And this, the inflow of soul energy in the initiatory period, intensifies, so we might say, self-centeredness uh, is intensified. It is endowed with acute emotionalism and a swift response to glamour. So, indeed, no wonder it is so difficult. Different, DFC, difficult. Where there is so much first-ray energy to to be found as in your case, you know, in, in probably in four different uh, energy locations, there will be a strong conviction of destiny, a pronounced sense of power, and the feeling that you can see through people from a superior position so that their faults and failures and their little human failings loom large in your consciousness. And we might say, and not their soul quality and the uh, beauty of their possible soul expression. You know, the mind that is in Christ sees the false, of course, but also focuses so much on what the potential uh, can be. You are at this time, I guess, you know, why read this? It's long, okay. And it is the case of one individual, but I think it sets forth some conditions that we all will encounter, or have encountered taking the second uh, initiation. There are some generalities here that we cannot afford to overlook. And since the great majority of students um, of the Tibetan in, in the group he was training had before them the second initiation, it becomes, I think, very important. You are at this time in a state of intensely 
irritable sensitivity to all and sundry, and you are overwhelmed by acute glamour, you know, just on the brink of being able to overcome the majority of glamour at the second degree. So, you know, the dark before the light, we might say, is occurring here. When the light is shining in the distance, the dark seems ever darker. All that is in you of a first-rate quality is drawn to the surface and conditioning all your contacts, monad personalities, mind, physical brain, your soul ray of outgoing love, you know, essentially he is a second ray soul, is not much seen. And there is little love shown by you to your brothers in the ashram or to the members of your own group. And of course, love is the key to group progress and the key to really, on our planet and in the solar system, to initiatory progress. Every member of the hierarchy is a member of the hierarchy of love, whatever rays may be present. You may ask uh, here ask me at this point how I know this to be so and why I emphasize to you this knowledge. You have been taught by me that the masters concern not themselves with the personality details of the disciples' life expression. Therefore, why do I concern myself with what is happening to you? Those are just questions, and I will answer. You know, it, it's so interesting that uh, D.K. spoke uh, of his uh, impending mm, directness uh, and uh, concern only with soul matters, but then, in my view anyway, his compassion came to the fore. And uh, he he uh, had to involve himself in lesser matters which were really inhibiting the disciples' progress. Okay. There, there's so much instruction in this because, you know, it's so interesting that it is so often the failures rather than the successes, which really uh, teach us disciples coming later of the uh, difficulties of the path and give us a warning so that we will not step into the same condition. So we just don't know. I mean, if we were being instructed by letter, by Master DK, we really don't know how we would respond or how we would react. We can estimate that everything would be fine and we would take it all in stride, but maybe we would also have uh, sensitive, irritable, self-centered responses. We just don't know, but the day will come. I concern myself with your problems because you are taking the second initiation. It's a, it's a process. It's not just a ceremony, right? I mean, it, I just have to reemphasize that, right? It is a process and not just a ceremony. And because of its intense difficulty, I have watched over you for the past four years with more than usual care. So let's remember that. I mean, Look at the Christ taking the seventh initiation. It seems maybe to last over a 4,000-year period, roughly. And other initiations, much less, of course. They seem to expand, you know. Um, first initiation takes a while. Second, third, and fourth. Um, and maybe even fifth are approached rapidly, but then things begin to widen out. And these greater initiations can take as a process a very long time. And here DK is letting him know that through his own experience he understands and can 
identify. I know the inner turmoil, the self-recriminations, you know, where we accuse ourselves of having done things incorrectly and are ashamed, and the self-rationalizing, where we say, I, I did this uh, for the following reasons, and we try to somehow excuse ourselves and uh, come up with the reasons for our behavior which uh, lighten the load of realization about the unsuitability of the behavior. The deep subjective discontent, the longing to be free, and the atmosphere of acute suffering in which you live. So, you know, DK has been through this long ago, I guess, a couple of thousand years ago, probably, or more. And we should look at our own inner psychological state and say, look, are we passing through this kind of inner uh, emotional, chamomanasic, mental turmoil? Your spiritual morale is not high, and probably it's quite low, really. It has different ways of saying it. Your spiritual morale, the, the sense of confidence, uh, the sense of uh, strength, uh, the sense of joy of being able to move forward. This is, um, you might as well say, I think, depression. Because your solar plexus is wide open, responsive to every astral suggestion, disturbed by world pain as well as by your own, in a state of irritation and constant inner explosion, you know, that's the first ray, over your brothers in the ashram and over the members of your own group, you know, uh, let's just say that uh, ISGL has become uh, intolerant. And of course we can't abide in that state, can we? Because it deflects and uh, works against the application of the unitive factor of love. Many of the latter, uh, you know, the members of his own group that he's teaching, are of an emotional type. And forget not, my brother, we draw to ourselves those who respond to our major quality at any given time, and at this time, yours is emotional. Well, I'm sure ISGL did not want to hear that, because after all, I think he was a psychologist, a mythologist. Uh, he had um, quite a few attainments that he had achieved, and uh, I don't think he wanted to be relegated to an emotional uh, condition or to be assessed by the master as being largely in an emotional condition. I would remind you that the emotion to which I refer in connection with you is not that of the ordinary person. And this is something we have to pay attention to when we're looking at preparation for the second initiation. You are confronted with the emotion which the second initiation stirs up. Hmm. Okay. And this is something we take into consideration. This is a very different matter. It's much more intense, isn't it? You should realize, therefore, that my rating of you is high. Now, that's important to ISGL. I mean, somehow in his state of self-concern, he wants to be respected by the Master. He doesn't want to be put down, even though he seems to be putting down others due to his state of inner explosion and irritation and, dis and the dissatisfaction with himself is being uh, projected onto others. It is a, now notice this segue, this is absolutely brilliant how Master DK does this because he has to let this man down lightly and it's not easy. So anyway, this condition is caused by taking the second initiation. The second initiation is a high 
initiation because it uh, begins that uh, method of progress on the path, which is very rapid. Two, three, and four in the same life. Imagine. Now, DK says here, my rating of you is high. It is a spiritual rating. Now, notice what he does here. And has nothing to do with the rating of yourself behind which you hide your hurt and suffering soul, soul in incarnation, right? And which you seem to impose upon your students everywhere, namely that he is a becoming initiate of the fourth degree. Uh, I-S-G-G-L seems to impose on his students <clears throat> the uh, estimation that he is a becoming initiate of the fourth degree. My rating is true, and you will see, you know, this business of, excuse me, no, where is it now, of hierarchical status is one on, in relation to which many people stumble, people uh, exaggerate their own importance, uh, people put others down, it's just the glamour of personality, basically, and it's uh, a lower egoistical type of assessment. It's just too bad, but it happens. My rating says the Tibetan is true, and you will weather these stormy waters. Remember the waves that rise upon the stormy seas of life and gulf the swimmers, shut out the sun, and render all plans futile? Okay, page 473, White Magic. My rating is true, and you will weather these stormy waters, so the insertion of confidence is there, and arrive in the quiet land of realities, free from all emotion, yet at the same time, full of unimpeded love. Here, you know, I just, it almost chokes me up. This is a master letter writer. I mean, a, a master delivering amazing understanding in the most tactful way to a very sensitive individual. Anyway, uh, emotion will subside. It often gets in the way of love, even though we think our emotion is love. This is the reward of perseverance throughout the tests and trials of the second initiation. And the DK is enjoining ISGL to persist uh, and to persevere, which, uh, you know, unfortunately, he did not. I mean, I guess we all have the chance to say whether we will retreat because of our so-called hurt feelings and hide our sensitive soul in a justifiable, so we think, withdrawal from the source of truth, or whether we will tough it out and just keep going, no matter what uh, revelation in the light may come to us about our inadequacies. What I'm seeking to do is to help to indicate the nature of the tests and point out to you the reason why these tests and trials have overtaken you. Again, he's, he's saying, you know, I rate you highly. You know, maybe he has to has to do that with such an individual who is so sensitive to his spiritual status and as is the case with many, you know, he's got this superiority complex, but so often it's based upon uh, an inferiority complex. And that's one of the strange reversals in psychology. Everything, you know, now here DK shows how he knows. He knows this from experience. Everything may seem to fail you. Your knowledge of psychology, and he, you know, he had the training. Your groups of students, your friends, and your brothers in the ashram. It's a bit like the, uh, a bit like the crucifixion, you know. You lose everything, but it's not. <laughs> it's just a anticipation uh, of that higher initiation. 
um, but it is not. It is simply an anticipation of that higher initiation. Think not that this indicates the fourth initiation. So that's the segue into the estimation which ISGO had of himself as a becoming initiate of the fourth degree. Think not that this indicates the fourth initiation, the crucifixion, and then DK gives the contrast. That initiation has to be faced clear-eyed, free from glamour, with a heart full of love and a mind released from all criticism. Okay, well, there is one of the, the key ideas of what is required at the fourth degree, which, you know, so many eager disciples kind of uh, anticipate with respect to themselves without having made the earlier fulfillments. That fourth initiation has to be faced clear-eyed, free from glamour, by that time I would hope so, with a heart full of love, because the heart is particularly the chakra, which is the focal point of the fourth degree, heart and soul, a complete soul infusion, really, and a mind released from all criticism, as Master D.K. calls it, that dire creator of misery, criticism. And we have reviewed that particular phrase, and it needs pondering. For this, the second initiation prepares the disciple. So this is the segue. And so he keeps the possibility of that higher initiation in mind as he talks to ISGL. He, he doesn't cut him off from the initiation that he thinks he's passing through. He, he leaves the road open. Um, for this fourth initiation, the second initiation prepares the disciple. Today, and now reality here, realism, today you know you are full of emotion and that it almost sweeps you off your feet at times. You know you are more prone to criticism than not. You know, and, and notice he, he's, this is interesting, again, the psychologist here, he's not saying, you are this, you are this, you are this, as if he's pointing the finger, he says, you yourself know it. So it's just a recognition of what you know. This is the art of the way he wrote these letters. I just stand amazed all the time when I think of uh, how he does it. Today you know you are full of emotion and that it almost sweeps you off your feet at times. You know you are more prone to criticism than not. You know that under the influence of glamour you oft wield the weapon of speech in a destructive manner and not constructively, you know, the glamour maybe of spiritual self-importance. You know that deep within yourself you are not satisfied with the work you do or the words you write. So ISGL is invited to realize that he does in fact know these things. And DK is not just pointing the finger at him. They are together analyzing his situation, together. The book you have lately published, I have psychometrized, you know, they, they get the symbol of its content. They don't have to read word for word. That's an amazing condensation of the evaluation process. The book you have lately published, I have psychometrized and find it to be six ray in nature. I ran into this book. I think it's called The High Walk of Discipleship. And if I'm correct, uh, it is a book in which the sixth ray really leaps off the page and not the first ray uh, relating to Shambhala, which was the subject, the way into Shambhala, which TK would have him write about. It will prove most helpful to probationary disciples. Okay. And they need such help. So it's, again, we don't just criticize and dismiss what you do. It's useful. Okay. It will not help disciples, for it deals with that which they know well. So, you know, it's such a balanced approach in DK's 
approach to helpfulness. The call went out to you from the ashram, the greater ashram, I suppose, to write upon the theme of Shambhala, the center where the will of God is known and from whence the love of God flows forth. This you rejected, owing to the emotional turmoil in which you found yourself. This would have been, you know, the very thing that brought liberation. Yet, says D.K., I had a purpose and a reason in suggesting this theme. It was not just to have a book, which would be of service to disciples, but because it was essential as part of the pre-initiation test for you to bring in some of the Shambhala force into your consciousness. Maybe we'll, we have some marvelous um, compilations on Shambhala. Uh, provided, as many compilations have been, by Zach Rymill in uh, New Zealand, Australia. He did a fantastic job. And uh, maybe we'll, you know, try to get into that in our compilational studies. <coughs> so DK had a motive. It was the impact of the Shambhala force, you know, maybe for First Ray Monad, you know, which you can touch and to which you can intelligently respond, which was the main factor in bringing to the surface all the latent emotion and all the glamour which are today enveloping you. So there's that tremendous Pluto, Aries, Pluto, Shambhala, you know. It's um, this first ray under Pluto just drags to the surface all kinds of things, and Vulcan gets into the act as well. Uh, preceding the second degree, um, both of those planets are still very much involved. As you considered the theme of Shambhala and later rejected my suggestion to write about it, doesn't seem wise, does it, but who knows what we would do, you brought yourself in contact with the energy emanating from Shambhala. Yet, my brother, had you occupied yourself with my suggestion and dealt with the theme the way into Shambhala, much of that Shambhala force would have been transmuted along constructive lines and creative endeavor, and your condition would not be what it is today. So, you know, this is like a visit uh, to the doctor's office, isn't it? <laughs> and the doctor has some not-so-happy news to tell you. Hmm. Well, it, it's, you know, very much worthwhile to read uh, these instructions. And we have a, a group of four or five within the Moria Federation who are excellent esoteric astrologers and doing the research to find out some of the missing charts of the people in the group so that from the astrological perspective, what DK says about the ray unfoldments can be better explained and the periods uh, through which the people are passing when DK says certain things and gives certain types of advice can be properly assessed in terms of the available energies. Well, okay, I think we've reached the point here uh, where I can say that this is the end of, um, what am I calling this? Second initiation compilation. A program uh, number three, and our day today is the 15th of June, and we'll see when I can get going uh, on this further, uh, beginning of second initiation commentary program number four, or compilation maybe it is, uh, second initiation uh, compilation commentary <laughs> SICC uh, initiation mm -hmm. and we'll see <coughs> when that is possible I think I've run over my hour here but in any case uh, there's so much to think about and we have now looked at some of the important challenges that precede the taking of the second initiation. Maybe not for everybody, but for first-rate types and second-rate types, and this man was both, 
it's very, very difficult. And uh, I think under the intensity of the coming third installment and the great hierarchical conclave, I think, you know, a number in the group may well be uh, given the opportunity to pass through that initiation. Okay, friends, so that'll be it for the moment, and uh, we'll go on from there. Thank you for studying along with me. All the best. Bye-bye.